With OSPF, you can configure two commands and let everything else use default settings. This video tells all about those two commands. This video is part of a series of instructional videos. This is the first one. And in this video, we'll talk about the OSPF process ID, how to configure that, OSPF network commands, and OSPF configuration mode. And for all these instructional videos, I'll point you at additional study and review exercises. I'll do that at the end of the instructional video because that's where I focus on the CCNA exam. In that section, I'll always point to the official CERT guides, which are popular to use, and give you context between this video and those books. I'll talk about those review tasks and the videos associated with them so you know which ones to use. And I always like to add a little something extra that's kind of interesting and maybe a little off the wall that will help you towards your goal of getting your CCNA. All right, let's jump in and learn about basic OSPF configuration. Let me start by describing the topology. I'm going to have these four routers, and each router is connected to two others over an Ethernet WAN link, and each router has a LAN interface with no other routers connected. Now I'm going to show you the subnets first here in green. So we've got these LAN subnets 10110, 10120, 10130, and 10140. And then we've got subnets for the four WAN links 10112, 10123, 10134, and 101. 14. So that's a bit of perspective on the subnets. And of course, the interface IDs are around there. And I'm going to show you this throughout this video and in the related verification video for part B of this section. Now for the router IP addresses, you'll often see IP addresses shown with just the last octet near the router. So you'd look at the subnet ID and then fill in a fourth octet of .251 in each case. All right. Uh, so I'm using .252 for router 2, .253 for router 3, .254 addresses for router 4, just so I don't have to think so hard to remember the addresses, and maybe you won't have to as well. All right, so that's the design. And just to make sure it's clear on the IP addresses, here's the full 4 octet IP address for each interface spread around the diagram. Now, that's important to understanding the OSPF network command because the network command is going to have you configure one thing, and then iOS is going to compare your network command to the interface addresses. All right, so it's important that you remember what they are or can refer to them, so make sure to flip back to that page if it's helpful. All right, so OSPF config, there are two steps. You create an OSPF software process in each router. And then on each router, you, quote, enable OSPF on interfaces, and there are two types of interfaces. OSPF interfaces on which OSPF neighbors may exist, like links where you know some other router exists. And then also, if there's no other router, but you want to advertise about the connected subnet. So going back to that topology diagram, R1 on its top link connects to R2. Well, R1 expects a neighbor, so R1 would want to enable OSPF here. Likewise, R1 on its bottom link connects to router R4, so we'd want to enable OSPF here. And even on the left, there's no potential neighbor on the left, but if we want to advertise about this subnet 1 over to the left side of R1, we want to enable OSPF there. In fact, your typical case is enabling OSPF on every production interface in your design. All right? So that's the plan for where you enable it. You use the network command to enable, and what the network command does is you configure some parameters. iOS then applies some logic based on the network command to the IP addresses of the interfaces. And if there's a match, then it enables OSPF on the matched interface, and that's where we'll spend most of our time in this video. All right, last thing. The simple part of the config is creating this OSPF process. So there's a global command, router OSPF, and then a number. You make up the number you want to use. Here's the range. The number does not matter. It doesn't have to match between any two routers. You could use one on every router, and we could use one on every router on every company in the whole world, and we'd be fine. All right, so there's no need to worry about uniqueness. It's just a number in that range. After you configure that router OSPF global command, you get into router configuration mode and type in various network commands, 
with the goal of enabling OSPF on the interfaces on which you want to enable it. Now let's work through that logic for a bit using this sample. All right, and the important parameters are this address and this wildcard mask. All right, so this second numeric parameter is called a wildcard mask. It's not a subnet mask, it's a wildcard mask, and the term comes from access control lists that define the idea of a wildcard mask. So the value is 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 now, here's the important part a wildcard mask octet of 0 means you must compare the address in the command, the network command, to the interface, and they must match. So here we've got four octets of zeros in the wildcard, which means we must compare all four octets. So the address in the network command is 10.1.12.251. So what iOS says is, let me look at the interface addresses and see if any of them have all four octets that match respectively 10, 1, 12, and 251. So there is, of course, an interface address up here that is exactly 10, 1, 12, 251. So iOS compares them and says, hey, um, we match the first and second and third and fourth octet. So this command, this one network command, matches this one interface, but not the other two. So that one network command enables OSPF on gig 000. So that's the logic behind a network command. And just to emphasize how that works, let's take a look at this one. Uh, network 10.1.1.251. Well, that's exactly the left-hand interface IP address. Would this wildcard mask would match the left-hand interface? And this one, 10.1.14.251, matches the bottom interface. A wildcard of all zeros means we must compare all four octets. It matches the bottom interface. So that's how the matching works in a network command. By the way, notice they all end in area zero. CCNA focuses on single area designs. That means all the interfaces are in area zero. And that's how you assign, not only enable OSPF on the interface, but how you assign it to a specific area. In this case, all the interfaces get placed in area zero. Just to emphasize the point, let's take a case where we typed a network command, but it's not very useful. It doesn't match anything. Here we've got network 10144.251 with, again, an all zeros wildcard mask, which means compare all four octets. They all must match. So if that's what's in the network command, if you look at our three addresses on router R1, none of them exactly match that, right? For instance, if um, when iOS compares to the top interface, 10.1.12.251, there's not going to be a match because we'll have a match in three octets. But in the third octet, there's not a match. So we wouldn't match that top interface, nor will we match the left hand or the bottom interface. Now, all the examples so far use a wildcard mask of all zeros, but there are other wildcard masks. Let's take a look at the 000255 wildcard mask for a moment. The 255 means we don't care about that octet. It can be any value. We'll consider it to match already. So here we've got the network command with an address and a wildcard mask of 000255. Let's analyze it. So there's the wildcard mask repeated up here, 000255. And we can put a big gray box over that octet kind of to mask it out to say, hey, we don't care about it. All right. So visually, we don't care about that fourth quartet in this case. The address in the network command begins with 10112. But by convention, we wrote a zero or configured a zero in that fourth quartet. Why? Well, we masked it out. We had a 255 in the fourth quartet, excuse me, fourth octet of the wildcard mask. So by convention, you write a zero in the address field because we know we're ignoring it. All right. So more about that at the end of the video. So 10, 1, 12, 0. And now iOS goes through its comparison logic. It looks, say, at the top. IP address 10.1.12.251, but the 251 doesn't matter. It's on that octet that where we don't care what's going on there. Of course, the first three octets do match. So in this case, the matching logic says it's a match. The three octets we care about do match. That would enable OSPF on the top interface and place it in area zero. Now, of course, we want OSPF enabled on all three interfaces, so to complete the configuration, we'd need 
a command light network 10110 same wildcard mask that says, hey, match any interfaces whose addresses begin with 1011. And this middle one, 10114 with the 000255 wildcard that says, hey, match the bottom interface. So again, three network commands that match the three different interfaces, enabled OSPF, and place them in area zero. So the wildcard mask is the key. So to summarize the five easiest wildcard masks, the all zero ones we've talked about, which means iOS should compare all four octets when doing its comparison. The one we just saw, 000255, says compare just the first three octets. And you might guess the pattern, right? Two zeros and two 255 says compare only the first two octets. A single zero with three 255s, compare only the first octet, ignore the last three. And then the interesting case, all 255 says ignore all four octets, which basically means match all. That's how you'd configure a match every IP address possible with one network command. So let me walk you through a few more examples, keeping this in mind. Oh, by the way, Anytime you use a wildcard mask with a 255, the convention is that those octets, the masked octets, we configure a zero in the network command's address value to match, all right? So let's take this one. Network 10100 with two zeros and two 255s. So because we end in 255s for two octets, we coded zeros in the address field at the end there. So what do we have? Here's our wildcard from the network command repeated. Here's our address from the network command repeated. We've got the graphic masking out the last two octets, if you will. Does router R1 have any IP addresses that begin with 10.1? Basically, that's the logic. And indeed, all three interface addresses begin with 10.1, right? So this, get this, this one network command enables OSPF on all three interfaces. Right? So you don't have to have one network command per interface, and it places each of them in area zero. In fact, you could use that match all logic of the all 255s wildcard mask. By convention, coding a 0, 0, 0, 0, a 0 in all of the address octets there. So if we've got this wildcard of all 255s and an address of zeros because they don't really matter, well, we don't care. We assume they match, we assume they match, we assume they match, and then in the fourth octet, we assume they match. So that's the catch-all, match every IP address. We've enabled OSPF on every interface. Kind of a cool uh, configuration effect. If you added in lab, you just wanted to get OSPF working on every interface, put this configuration on every router, and it enables OSPF on every interface, no matter what IP address you have configured there, because it matches all of them. All right, so what happens after you've enabled OSPF on an interface? Well, it advertises about that interface and the subnet connected to it, so it advertises about that. It sends hellos out that interface trying to discover neighbors. It doesn't know if neighbors exist yet, so it tries to discover them. So if it gets a hello back, then it says, hey, here's a potential neighbor. And then if the received hello message and the one it sends, there's some parameter checks that happen. So if we pass the parameter checks, they become neighbors. That is, they're willing to communicate OSPF LSA information, and they exchange LSAs with each other. And once they've exchanged LSAs, they can run that SPF algorithm and calculate routes and add OSPF routes to the routing table. Whew. All because we enabled OSPF based on a network command. So to sum up the network command logic, so you configure an address, iOS compares that, you configure a wildcard mask if you want to limit, well, you have to configure it, but it limits the octets that are compared. You configure the area number that's assigned for CCNA, that's typically just area zero. And then, yes, there are other wildcard masks allowed but I'm going to leave that discussion until we get to access control list, which is actually in the volume two book for some of the more interesting wildcard masks. Now let's talk CCNA. Many of you will have the official Cisco Press cert guide. So if you do, if you were to open up volume one, chapter 22, you'd find two major sections. The content in this video matches some content in that first major section. 
In fact, there are three instructional videos here at the YouTube channel that I made to match that section. So let's say you watched all three of those videos. It's pretty comprehensive to what's in that book section. So yeah, you could skip the book section, pick up some time, and get a reading break. There are no must-read topics in that section as compared to the videos. However, if you wanted to pick up the book and find the Implementing Multi-Area OSPF topic, that is one small topic that I didn't mention in the videos. For everyone, you can do a study and review exercise using a configuration lab. You'll find these at my blog. Here's the direct link below. And each of these config lab pages, the top part of the page has the lab intro that talks about the topology and configuration. Then it asks you to do the lab by creating some configuration. Then the bottom of the page gives a lab review that explains what you should have configured. To go along with that, I've created a lab intro and review video that gets into more depth on the intro and review parts of the exercise. So open the lab that you see below and do the lab. Finally, I like to give you something a little extra related to the exam here at the end. So in this case, look at these three sample configs over on the right and say you type those network commands and pay close attention to the address and wildcard masks. Let's take that first upper right one. We've got four 255s in the wildcard and I mentioned by convention that you're supposed to write zeros over here in the matching octets. If you don't follow that rule, here's the deal. iOS applies that rule in what it stores in the running config. So watch the changes that are going to happen here. iOS is going to say, hey, for each 255 in the wildcard, I'm going to change the corresponding octet in the address to zero. So there it goes. It gets changed all zeros. That's what shows up in the running config file. No log message, no notification. It just changes it. So if we look at this next one with two zeros and two 255s in the wildcard mask, iOS will zero out the last two octets of the address. Here we go. Watch the movement. Changes them to zeros. That's what goes in the running config. Third example, we've got three network commands, each of which have a three zeros and 255 wildcard mask, meaning it'll zero out the last octet of those three addresses. There you go. So that's what changes in your running config. Just be warned, that'll happen. Don't forget to click the like. It's the number one thing that your feedback helps drive YouTube's algorithm for me. It's much appreciated. Leave me a comment. Always love to hear from you. And subscribe if you're new. Hey, thanks for hanging out. And check out the verification video related to this one. Talk to you soon.